In today's episode, we have Sandra. She is an author, high priestess, coven leader, L fame, business. She also runs her own business at Gallows Hill Witchery. Sandra, how are you? I'm doing well today. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, darling. So glad to have you on the show. Where do you join us from? Uh, I'm here at Gallows Hill Witchery headquarters on Gallows Hill in Salem, Massachusetts, the witch city. I love it. I love it. Sandra, tell me about you. Tell me about your journey. Well, my family is from Salem. And so I think that probably made it a little bit easier for me to find my way into the craft. Yeah. You know, I think I would have been a witch anywhere, honestly. I don't think that it's a requirement to be in Salem by any means. But um, at that time, it was not as prevalent as it is today. You know, it it wasn't something where there were witch shops, you know, yeah. everywhere. Um, it was just really a lot of new age type of shops might have been cropping up in different yeah. places, mostly probably in major um, cities, not really small town. You know, you wouldn't really have many small town shops and things of that nature. And back in the day, uh, there was no internet. The internet wasn't a thing. So you couldn't really connect with people of like mind very easily. And so it really was a journey when you say, you know, tell us about your journey. It was a much tougher journey back yeah. then. Today, you're just a few, you know, Google searches away. Exactly. Um, knowledge and teachers and, and finding shops or ordering things online yeah. and having them delivered right to your door. Exactly. Um, we didn't have that. We didn't have ordering online. We we didn't have Amazon to go look at books or what have you. We didn't have any of that. And so um, it was much harder back in those days to find your way to the craft. Um, but there were good people here in Salem that were pioneering being out of the broom closet. Yeah as it were. And so that made it a lot easier for me, definitely. And that made, you know, and it made sense of a few things for me personally, yeah. um, because I had a psychic awakening at a young age. And I think a lot of people do um, have it at a very young age, but a lot of people also kind of shut it off yeah, or go into kind of denial about it, or they get uh, frightened by it. So they just push it away um, instead of leaning into it. But I leaned into it and I, you know, decided that um, I wanted to pursue a greater understanding of that ability. And, um, and that led me down the road. But there were other things I think that were clues yeah. to me as well, seeing things from the spirit world, connecting deeply with animals um, wow. You know, just different things that, you know, feeling my best out in nature. Um, I grew up, you know, here on Gallows Hill and there's um, quite a swath of woods in Gallows Hill Park. Um, and there's uh, the old up to the old water tower where they used to believe the tree was um, where the witches were hanged. Um, that's actually at the bottom of my hill. Um, not really the top. Um, it's more towards the bottom of the hill, um, but it's still in this neighborhood. It's right yeah, here in this yeah, neighborhood. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but we used to just be out. You know, we just be out. Um, you know, in those woods all the time. It really felt like home. And people used to say to me, like, "How does it feel? Is it really heavy?" To have these spirits, um, you know, especially of the people that were falsely accused um, of what they were calling witchcraft, yeah. which to them was really more like, you know, trucking with demons or what have you, um, not really what witchcraft really is. And so they were like, how's that, you know, how's it feel to grow up around these tortured spirits? Yeah. And I say, you know, we've, we've gone a long way to putting those spirits to rest. So I think that, you know, plus I don't know that I would know any different. I just, I grew up in it. So it's exactly. like when you just are raised in that um, environment, you don't really think twice about it. You know, I've gone to other places that feel kind of 
like dull yes, or yes, mute yes. in comparison. And I'm like, oh, okay. But I have thought the difference. Yeah. But growing up here and this, you know, basically just being raised in this spirit of place, it's you get used to that level of, of um, there's a hum, a spiritual hum in Salem that I've felt, you know, only in select other places. And I, I think it's like there are, you know, ley lines, energy lines, you know, that just connect these sacred places. And I think this is a sacred place, you know, this is a place. And yes, of course, it's been commercialized. And there are a lot of things here that I think are more geared to the surface. But the good news is there are also channels by which you can get to the deeper things here. And so even though there seem to be more and more people all the time offering very surface level, you know, uh, wisdom, if you will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's also the deeper, the deeper knowledge is here. You just have to know where to look for it. Wow. Wow. When, when it came to animals, um, what was your connection? Would it be like appearing animals or animals in dreams, a connection to animals? So from the idea of actual live animals, um, you know, I always just kind of had a knack and even with some of the wild animals around here, like even, you know, squirrels or crows or, you know, some of the, you know, the, the, I guess, indigenous animals of this area, um, which we don't have a lot of really larger animals. Lately, we, you know, we've seen more foxes, coyotes, and things okay. of that nature recently, but like connecting even with like somebody's cat, you know, and just kind of having this uh, a moment, you know, where, or, or, you know, uh, you know, even, you know, dogs or other creatures, you know, that you'd encounter snakes, snakes was a big one too. Wow. And so, you know, as, as I kind of started unpacking that and saying like, what does all this mean? But I also had some animals that I just felt were, well, I guess you'd say spirit animals. Um, I know there's, Lots of controversy around these terms at this point, but like an animal that you felt like you had a kinship with. Um, and so there were creatures that I felt like I could, I could almost identify with okay. some of their traits, you know, and that was from a really young age. Wow. Um, and so being and believing, you know, at one point, uh, believing that in dreams, I could actually like shift into these animals. This is when I was. This I'm not even 10 years old yet when this is happening. Whoa, so, very young. Very young age, um, you know, exploring that idea of what happens on the astral. And so as an adult looking at that, I go, wow, that's like me as a child, like exploring yeah. Yeah. my astral presence and, you know, getting a feel for that, you know? So I think that um, it was, it was, it was from a, from a very physical point of view, it was being able to connect with animals really fast and having a good, strong connection with live actual animals. Yeah. But then from a sort of metaphysical view, um, exploring, you know, the spirit of mm -hmm. creatures, the way that I would explore the spirit of place here from a very young age and having even, even having that kind of awareness and understanding at a really young age, um, yeah, very, so that, very that sort of convinced me that I was, um, connected up with the yeah, supernatural. Yeah. And so I wanted to explore that more and delve deeper into that more at a young age. And, you know, by the time I was 12 or 13 years old, I was calling myself a witch, um, leaving behind my, my Catholic roots. And uh, as I've talked about a few times and talked yeah. about in our book, Reading the Leaves, in the introduction, um, I talked about how I, or at least I think I brought up how I, mm -hmm. I actually took my witch name as my confirmation name. Um, and then it became a part of my legal name, um, which my outer court witch name is Mariah. And that's why I'm Sandra Mariah Wright. Um, because I took that as a goodbye to the church and fully embracing um, myself as a witch. So, and then part of my name. 
And then when it when it comes to your journey to now reading tea leaves, tea leaves, how did that come along in the journey? Well, tea was always a part of my life. So it's in my baby book as one of my first food loves. Wow. So literally my mother recorded in my baby book tea. <laughs> so my grandmother, um, so my great grandmother was from Ireland and she came okay. over here pregnant with my grandmother. Wow. My grandmother almost wasn't even born here. <laughs> she was on the boat. She was wow. born like right after uh, my great grandmother landed here. So, um, you know, tea was kind of a way of life. It and is a way of life. Mother, my grandmother continued that on. And so in my grandmother's house, there was tea at nine, 12, three, six, yeah. and nine, you know, yeah. like all around the day, the kettle was going on, you know, yeah. kettle went on with breakfast, kettle went on with lunch, kettle went on with snack, kettle went on for af just freshly after dinner. I mean, it was just like a constant, you know, tea was just a thing in our house. And so it became, a, I associated it um, a lot with comfort. And so when I decided that I wanted to help other people learn more about their intuition, I knew that people would be more comfortable delving into tea leaf reading, maybe then like tarot or other things where the tool gets associated with something scary i think it's more i think it's very, very gentle very reassuring very right because tea is like a comfort we go to tea it's a way of winding down while tarot is is savage like some of the cards and some of the swords and some of the the, the pictures i'm just like whoa so a lot of um a lot of what we associate with tarot is hollywood's fault um just the same way um that a lot of people have negative associations with the ouija board okay. so there are different things that we've seen and have been shown to us over the years where um we are yep. having negative connotations with oh, these yeah. tools but these are inanimate objects they're they're tools so we are the source of the psychic power. Yeah. Um, we are, you know, we're the ones actually doing the doing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when somebody builds a coffee table, you don't say that hammer over there built the coffee table. You say, my grandfather built this coffee table. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's assumed that he did it with tools. He used a saw. He used a hammer. Yeah, yeah. He used nails. Those things don't build a table, though. So we have to remember that these things are tools and they need to be placed into the hands of the right person. Exactly. Actually put them to good use because you can kill somebody with a hammer, too. Exactly. But it doesn't make it an evil hammer, right? Unless the person, unless the act of the person holding the hammer and the intentions of the hammer, what are you going to do with that hammer? What the pressure, right. the impact, how will you use this? That's right. So you can use a hammer for good or you can use a hammer for not so good. And it's the same way with any tool, really. I can never tell you that any tool is 100% safe all the time. Because if I serve you a tea that you're allergic to yeah. and you have a massive allergic reaction that cuts off your oxygen, it could kill you. Exactly. So exactly. even tea can be dangerous the wrong way, right? But nobody's instant reaction mm -hmm. to the idea of tea is that it's scary. Exactly. You know? So when we set out to kind of talk about, you know, writing what we wanted to do to kind of bring um you know these tools to to a greater number of people um myself and my co-author Leanne Marama we sat down and said you know let's talk about all this tea you know because we had been for years doing events where we were teaching here in Salem um at our tea events you know, we were teaching psychic ability. That's where the name psychic tea comes from. That's why we have a, a, a show, 
ourselves um, called The Psychic Tea. Um, it's now a YouTube uh, show. Um, but for years, it was, um, you know, broadcast on um, Facebook, but it's it's actually a radio show. It's broadcast from radio. It's broadcast from radio here in in uh, in in Massachusetts. So we decided, you know, we have had great success teaching people tea leaf reading because they're so open to it. Yeah. And that's really a key when you're getting into psychic you know, when you're starting to awaken yourself and you're delving into your intuition, yeah. being open is so important. That's going to be your half the battle is yeah. getting yourself to relax and let go and receive that information um, and not second guess yourself, doubt yourself exactly. and everything. It's really, and so we needed to be able to like bridge, you know, that, that gap of people not trusting. And yeah. even during those events, we would even see people, they'd see something in the teacup, but they wouldn't believe it until we came over and, and confirmed it in the cup and confirmed it and verified right. that with our own knowledge and our own vision. And so so many times I would go up to somebody and I would say, okay, talk to me. What do you see in your cup? And they'd say, oh, I don't know. I don't really see anything. And I'd say, because oh, sometimes okay. we don't want to see what we don't want to see. Truth, truth. And so I would look and I would say, well, right away I see blah, blah. And they'd say, oh, I saw that. But it's the same thing. And it's like, because they don't want to influence me. They don't want me to just repeat back what they're what they're uh -huh. saying but it's so important especially yeah. in tea leaf reading for the person who's reading it is to identify and go with yeah. what they see right away you've got to get those first impressions you've got to capture those first impressions and everything after that if you're waiting for me to tell you it's kind of getting it's really getting colored by what I'm saying, but what's so important is what that person who's reading it is, yeah. is seeing maybe more so than in almost any other kind of, you know, style of, of readings that I can think of, um, you know, whether that's runes or tarot or anything, it's like with tea leaf reading, the person asking the questions, the, the seeker really is in the driver's seat a lot because what they're seeing yeah. is so key exactly. to unlocking the knowledge that's there, you know, and there are so many times that people get a reading and they don't, it's like, they already know, but they don't want to know. They, they know the answer. They don't want to know the answer. They exactly. want it to be something other than what it is. Exactly. And so a lot of times some, even, you know, whether you're sitting for a tower reading or a palm reading or whatever, um, you, you kind of already know, but you don't really, you don't want it. You don't, to you don't, you don't want to face it because that could be relationships. That could be business. Yes. That could be transition. That could be change. That could be, um, just change in the way that the things that you're currently working now may have an influence or something has to let go where it be an individual, where it be a job opportunity, where it be a family member. And it's like, we want to let go to, we want to hold on to our comfort zone that any new information, we just don't want to accept it. So um, Sandra, how can we explain tea leaf reading to someone that has never heard of it? So, I'd kind of be surprised if there are people that haven't heard of it. Um, I mean, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see in the beginning of Outlander. I don't know if you're familiar with this TV show. It's a series, very popular. She actually does sit for a tea leaf reading in the beginning of that show. I was so excited to see that because I was like, here we are. It's starting mm -hmm. to come back into popular mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was so excited to see that she got a tea leaf reading. Um, so, you know, this has been around for centuries, centuries. 
right? So this is going back hundreds of years and it's originating in China. Um, and basically, and then it's, it's moving its way across Europe. Um, and so it winds up popping up in all of these different places. Tea is the most popular drink in the world next to water. I mean, obviously water, yeah, uh, but it beats coffee. There are more people drinking tea across the globe than there are drinking coffee, which is kind of shocking for somebody that grew, you know, grew up in this country mm -hmm. where coffee is like a way of life. Yeah. But I know from, you know, from my upbringing that tea is also very much tea a way of life. And so um, when you drink loose leaf tea, yeah. um, you know, there would be a lot of, you know, leaves left in the cup. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, once you drink that down and we do a little sort of a little swirl and we can talk about the method in a minute. Um, then what's left can form little shapes. The, the loose leaf tea lends itself to that, you know, forming the shapes, not tea bag tea. Tea bag tea is too finely processed. It's too chopped up. It's not that you can't do it with tea bag tea. It's just very difficult. And they, it's not, a lot of times it doesn't really form very good shapes. You know, mm -hmm. it's so, it's so tiny that it just doesn't really, it, it tends to just kind of look a mess. Um, but the nice, a nice loose leaf tea, uh, we like a oolong or a gunpowder tea, which is like the traditional Chinese mm -hmm. tea. Um, but you can do it with others, but I, I'm just saying like, especially for a beginner, we highly recommend oolong or a gunpowder tea. We usually use a gunpowder at um at our events and so um and even i'm sensitive to caffeine but even i can stand um drinking just the small amount that you need to yeah. drink but you don't have to fill up your whole cup let's face it you just really need like a half a cup of tea um so even though because you have to take it neat you can't put sugar you can't put cream or any of that um but yes yeah, so what's left you know once you get the liquid out yeah. um what's left of the leaves on the you know inside the bowl of the cup that is where you derive you know your symbols from you look and you see what strikes me right away what do i see and honestly um anybody that has the ability to see visually um can do tea leaf reading anybody um, if you have ever been out, you know, with your friend and you, you're sitting out, you know, having a picnic or you're laying in the grass and looking up at the clouds and you're starting to see things and one of you is like, oh, look, it's a turtle. And you're like, where's the turtle? Oh, I see the turtle. See, for me, that kind of looked like a dragon because like yeah. that's the head and that's yeah, where yeah. the wings are. And that's the, and oh, yeah, no, I see the dragon and you can kind of talk back and forth about the shapes that you're seeing in the clouds. It's really that simple. Um, you cannot, your, your mind wants to make sense of things. It wants to kind of connect the dots. It wants to create patterns. It wants to identify patterns. And the better you are at identifying patterns, the, the faster you're going to pick up tea yeah. leaf reading. And so you look in the cup and you start to see those patterns. Now, there's a body of knowledge. There's a whole bunch, centuries worth of lore on what those symbols mean when you get them in the cup. But it's also really important for you to look at them from the standpoint of your own life, because sometimes they can be literal things in your life, or they can be things that are like private jokes, almost things really only you're going to understand yeah. things that may be somebody sitting across from you. That's not going to have the same connotation yeah, yeah, yeah. because they don't, they haven't lived your life. And exactly. so that's why it's so vital for the person who's seeking for the yeah. person asking the questions to be in the driver's seat of this reading, because you're going to have very specific things 
that might be messages to you that are very important. And it doesn't really matter as much what some book is going to tell you um, is the meaning. Because if you instantly know why you're seeing that, then you've got to go with that. Go with your gut. You got to go with your gut. You know, that's how you're going to get good at getting in touch with that intuition, leaving that self-doubt behind and really getting good at getting those signs and signals that are going to help you make better choices and live your best life. I love that. I I heard your previous interview and um, it was beautiful to see that um, loved ones that have crossed over can leave messages. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we've spent years doing um, around Samhain time or Halloween. Um, we have done tea with people to mourn their dead, but yeah. also to reconnect with them. And interestingly enough, when we started doing that event, when we started hosting that event, and I want to say it was maybe 2006. Wow. Um, that we started hosting that event. Um, we thought that we were resurrecting, no pun intended, um, an old Victorian custom. Um, and so we, and we even got, I even got a beautiful spirit kettle from the Victorian era. And they call it a spirit kettle. And I literally thought, okay, they're using this as a method of, you know, brewing a special tea to connect with your beloved dead. And so I'm, you know, Leanne and I are hosting these events where we're getting mediumship messages coming through the tea leaves. And so years and years later, when we decide, yeah, we're going to write a book about that, we're going to write a book about reading tea leaves. And very importantly, we're going to write about how to do that for mediumship. And we knew from a review of um, the few books that were out at the time about tea leaf reading, we knew that they didn't really delve into that. And we thought, well, maybe it's like they're just trying to kind of keep that a little more close to the vest. Um, And so we went out in search of some source material from the Victorian era um, and you know, just was digging and digging and digging and came up with absolutely nothing. And so um, this actually led us to realize that we actually invented this. Wow. Um, We're the pioneers of it. Um, We're the first people to write about it in a book. Um, And we're the first people to do this as, as a practice with people and bring people into this. And we've been doing it Um, yeah, for many, many years at this point. So that was exciting because I had always said that I was waiting to write a book until I could write something no one else had ever written. And you did it. And I, yeah, we did. (laughs) Without, without knowing, without knowing, doing, and, and it's it's nice when you do something with a pure heart, right? It's like, It's like you was looking to put it together and then you realize, wait, no one else has done it. I've done it. So, yeah, it was quite a shock to us. I mean, we just we just had it in our heads that this was a Victorian. Now, don't get me wrong. Victorians did throw cups. That's what they called it. Throwing cups. They did. They did read the tea leaves. They didn't do it to communicate with the dead. Mm -hmm. They did it to see the future. And so. They did it because they wanted to see what was coming. Okay. Um, They wanted to get an understanding the way that people read the tarot because they want to see what's coming. And people didn't understand, you know, um, I guess that they could sit and have tea with the spirits, tea with people that have crossed over. And so that's what we were doing. We were inviting them in to have tea with us and to communicate through that method um, the way that, you know, you might do table tipping or you might do automatic writing or Mm -hmm. other types of scrying or other types of things that people do to communicate with the dead. And there are multiple methods to do this. And, Mm -hmm. And 
a medium um, may feel more comfortable with a tool than just necessarily just sitting down and saying, okay, give me the messages. And there are plenty of mediums that can do that, that can just sit there and say, yeah. oh, these are the messages. But there are others who feel more comfortable using something as a little bit of a go-between or a little bit of, you know, I've seen, I've heard of people using, I've heard of people using the tarot. I've heard of people using the pendulum. Um, there are a lot of different, yeah. you know, mediums out there that do things in different ways. And there are just as many people that will say, well, that's not mediumship. That's not mediumship. Well, people don't care how you're giving them the message. As long as you get the message, as long as give me, a give, message. give me the reassurance. Let me know you're okay. Let me know you're present. Let me know we have a connection. Let me know I haven't lost you in this, right? As long as I can feel you, just anything, just a memory, a, a hint, a glimpse, just give me anything. Yes, <laughs> yeah. indeed. And so when you deliver that validation, because let's face it, the strongest connection to your beloved dead is you. Exactly. But you doubt yourself. And when you're communicating directly with your dead, you're saying, am I just making this all up? Am I just like making this up in my head and I'm believing it? And so people want that outside validation confirmation. and confirmation. So yes, you know, it, it's like you can do this yourself. And tea leaf reading is the best reading to do for yourself because it's really about that. So tarot, a lot of people say, I read tarot for others, but I don't read tarot for myself. Okay. Or, you know, I'll do the Ouija board, but I'm not going to do it for myself. You know, that type of thing. There's this kind of um, taboo almost about doing it for yourself. And I don't, I don't really ascribe to these taboos, but I understand when people do. Yeah. But tea leaf reading is meant to be for yourself. You're entering almost into a contract with the tea because you're taking it into your body. There's no more intimate way to get a reading than a tea leaf reading because you're literally ingesting part of that. And the water... Let's take a look at it for a second. Water is the most, it's the element that is most associated with psychic ability. Water is our intuition, water, our emotion, right? And so what better way to connect with our dead than the source of all life, which is water, right? And it's what unites all of us. We're all made up of 90 something percent water. It connects us all to each other. It connects us to this planet. It connects us to life force itself. It's the water in the womb. It's everything, right? Yeah. It is. And it keeps us alive. And so that is a symbol that's so connected. And it's also been really associated with the dead. The idea of sort of sailing off beyond the horizon, you know, sailing into the West and sailing off to the other realms and that whole that whole idea you know that whole concept is all also associated with water so it's it's just one of those things the ferryman you know that's taking you to the other side and all this other stuff it's all through through so many different yeah. cultures over centuries you know and in so many different countries and in so many places around the world the water was the source of life, but it also was associated with the dead. So it's the perfect, it's the perfect, uh, you know, route to go um, for this. And so the idea of actually taking that tea into your body is you're saying, I'm accepting this knowledge. I'm accepting, I'm making this connection and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking this into myself physically. It's definitely one of the most physical types of reading that you can do. You're going to digest that reading. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, 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 a, with, with a strong impact, right? Yeah. Um, 
Sandra, so we so we can use a tea reading for ourselves. We can use it to to be able to communicate or receive messages from loved ones mm -hmm. for the future as well. Anything else or those three particular areas? Well, you know, it depends on. I mean, for me, it depends like, on us. Yeah, it really does. I mean, I I um we talk about in the book. There's a lot of different ways yeah. for you to view the cup. The same way that if you were laying out different types of tarot readings, yeah. you might be up for a quick card pull. Just let, yeah. let me pull a card for today. What's today going to be like? I'm going to pull a card. Or you might be saying, you know, I'm faced with this quick decision I need to make. Give me a past, present, future on that. You might throw three cards down. Past, present, future. What's the root of this? What's presently going on? What's coming? Or you might say, I've got time. I want to kind of do an overview of everything that's happening right now. And you lay out a Celtic cross, you know, you go 10 cards or you might even go deeper than that. Let's say you pull up 10 cards and then you say, all right, I'm going to focus in on this. And you pull a few more cards about that question. Then it brings another question to your mind. So you pull a couple more. And in tea leaf reading, that cup is the way that you'd kind of control those positions or things, okay. right? So we talk about timing a lot in the book. We talk about how to gauge timing um, through the teacup. Okay. So when we're first teaching people, we like to keep it very simple. So a lot of times we'll be saying like, let's just look at the cup in general and things that are closer to the lip of the cup are things that are, you know, happening, their present situation, or they're just about to happen. Okay. And then as we move down closer to the further bottom, down. Up, we're going a little further out and further out and further out. And then because the way you have to flip the cup, anything that's on the saucer is like a distant future or kind of an overarching theme, right? So it's more distant. It's almost like in astrology, these would be the outer planets, right? It's not as, it's not as immediate, it's kind of a general thing. Um, and so that's how to keep it pretty simple. Um, and the way that you would read the cup, yeah. Um, if you go into any of these other methods, you would take the handle, you know how you sip a teacup like this? Yeah, yeah. Well, you want to turn that handle this way. So it's almost like you're looking in a handheld mirror. So you want okay. the handle to be at six o'clock if you're looking at this like it's a clock. Okay. The handle needs to be down here. Not over here where you're drinking, but you when you pick it up to read it, keep the handle at the bottom. Now, we're going to start looking at this like, okay, so from right here where the handle is, that is the closest stuff that's about to happen. And then as we work our way around the cup um, clockwise, yeah. we're going to go further out. So let's say okay. I tell the cup, I want to get a view of the next month. I'm going to pick the cup up, split it in four, and this is going to be week one, week two, week three, week four. Whoa. Now, let's say I need, I need an overview of the next three months. What's happening over the next three months? Now, I'm going to split the cup in thirds. The first third is this month coming. The second third that's opposite me is the second month yeah. and down this way is the third month. Now, you can get really detailed and be like, I'm going to split the cup into 12 months. So it's just like the hours on a clock. You know what I mean? So you're starting at six o'clock. Yeah. Seven is the, this next month. Seven to eight is the month after that. So you can be like, show me the, the course of the next year. I would definitely not split the cup any deeper than that. Because it's Perfect. Just impossible. Boom. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Boom. You don't really, you're not going to really get, you're going to be too, yeah. Yeah. How often, how often should we do this? Once, once a month, once every two weeks, or depending on our feelings? It really depends on what's happening. Um, okay. How much, how much has changed? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so there are people that they're like, oh, I just like to get a quick overview, you know, in the morning, you know, if I've got time, I'm going to read my tea leaves. So instead of making a cup of coffee, I'm going to make a cup of loose leaf tea. And then, and then. There are other people that say, oh, my God, my life is so busy. I don't have time to read tea leaves every day. I'm lucky if I can just do a Sunday morning for the whole week. Or some people say, ah, I look once a month. 
It really depends. But if I know I've got something happening and things are changing, that's when I'm going to go to it again. Because if I get an overview and things aren't moving, you know what I mean? Then I know, well, I got to start taking some actions, you know what I mean? To get things rolling. And then I'll take a look again. But if nothing's happening and there's, you know, there hasn't been anything you know, especially if there hasn't been anything that's diverting off of what I already read, then I'm going to go on what I read. You know what I mean? So it really, honestly, it's up to you. Now, if you're trying to develop a practice and you're just getting started, you might say to yourself, okay, I want to do this at least three times a week um, because I've started a journal of my readings and I want to see how accurate I am. So, and then you say to yourself, you know what? We can do this in a group. I'm going to invite a bunch of friends over Saturday. We're going to have Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. We're going to ta- all, everybody have tea. We're all going to read our leaves. We'll look at each other's and we'll make notes. And then, you know, a week from now, two weeks from now, we'll check in with each other and see how we did. You know, if you're trying to develop a practice, obviously you need to do it more than somebody that's already been doing it you know, for ages, and you're really just using it as a check-in and you're just basically saying like, okay, and I journal, I journal, I journal my readings because I want to see, I want to be able to go back and say, okay, how accurate was I? Did I see that correctly? Or, you know, we all have a blind spot. I don't care how long you've been reading or how good you are. Everybody has a blind spot, especially when it comes to themselves. How big that blind spot remains is based on how well you train yourself. You know, you can have a natural innate ability, but if you don't train yourself at all, exactly, then it never changes. It's only as good as it is. You know, it's when you actually work it and train it, and that's when you start to improve. You know, and and some people get by never having improved, and they just, you know, it's as good as it gets, but. I think we should, you know, look at life like this is not exactly learn, learn, exactly. learn, learn, soak up as much as you can possibly soak up, you know? So I say to myself, you know, any day that I'm learning, you know, is a good day. Is a good, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 100%. if I'm taking in something new, it's a good day. That's, that must be my, I think that's my Sagittarius moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I think and my if- Sag moon makes me long for the new yeah, thing, yeah. new adventure, you know, the new exploration. It's like, exactly. I, I, I want to be, you know, finding out something new. So Sandra, you can talk girl. Oh my gosh. I'm like trying to cut in. Um, Sandra, tell me about, um, just because I'm looking at the time, I told you I'll be here for an hour. We, I can easily do an hour and a half, two hours with you. Sandra, tell me about um, Leanne's mom when she did the tea reading and the health concern came up. Oh my gosh. Right. So yeah. Um, that was really scary. And it was, you know, you, especially since it happened at an event. Oh, it was an event. Oh my gosh. I can imagine the emotions. So uh, Leanne's mom, um, especially when we did, um, our Cape, when we were on Cape Cod, we would go down and do what we were calling the mystic tea. Um, and we haven't been back since the pandemic and we need, we really need to reconnect with that tea room and get back mm-hmm. down there. We haven't been back down there since the pandemic, but we used to go every summer and do a, um, a tea event on Cape Cod. And that's where Leanne's mom is from. And so she and some of her girlfriends or relatives um, like her auntie Lena and some other people used to come to that event. And so, um, you know, when you're seeing something that's concerning you, in your own parents yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you you have to keep a face on, you know, you, you have to keep your composure because you're at an event. You know what I mean? It's, it's all, it was always very difficult for me um, when my mom was at m- the event, because I was always like, what's going to show up in our cup? How's this going to go? You know what I mean? And so it was always a little tat, yeah, a, little, yeah. a little bit of anxiety, um, you know, surrounding that. Because we because we love our moms so deeply that it's like, oh, gosh, we're going to be taking a look at the future. And of course, you know, um, our mom's mortality 
was always top of mind at these yeah, things. Yeah, you know, we'd be yeah. like, okay, what are we going to see? And so, but we, you know, all, just as many times we'd see wonderful things, you know what I mean? But just like everybody else, just like everybody that goes into a reading with that little bit of apprehension, like, oh my gosh, like what's going to be said, Mm -hmm. you know, we ourselves still get a little bit of that because, you know, obviously it's like, hey, nothing here is guaranteed, nothing. And so, yeah, it was, um, it was very, we look at it as a positive thing because we say to ourselves, 100%. the more of a heads up that you can get. The more time you can get, the the, the more, right? And, and, and it's like you say, the way we look at it and what we want to see, because sometimes we may deny the information, but it's like, no, we saw it and we acted on it. So for the listener that, that hasn't seen um, the previous interview for Sandra, um, Leanne's mom, it came up as a, was it like a health warning or? or? Yeah, this is when her mom, um, it was her stomach. It was a, um, um, I think it was a, a, like a lump, a a stomach cancer. Um, Yeah, it's the stomach. We also had somebody um, have a heart um, issue come up at, at an event. Uh, not not a personal, not someone that was a family yeah. member, but we had um, somebody come up with that. And, you know, we did recommend that they get checked out. They did. And they wound up, it was, you know, they got done what they needed to get done. And so, um, you know, and here we are, you know, years, years ahead of that. And Leanne winds up having her own heart issue, (laughs) you know? So it's just like, sometimes when we deliver information to another person, we have to be able to identify when at times it's also a flag for us. Okay. So sometimes a psychic will see something in a reading and it's almost like the universe puts a person in your path not only for you to deliver a message to them, but for but them to, see, to deliver uh-huh. it back to you. to you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that gave me shivers because that is so true. Because um, my pr- I just had an interview, the previous one, and I was actually thinking of um, volunteering at a charity for the blind and the partially blind. Mm-hmm. And towards the end, my guest says, yes, my, my aunt used to inspire me. She used to be a teacher for the blind and the partially blind. And I was just like... <laughs> I was like, what? what's going on? So, yes. Um, Sandra, what is your favorite book? Oh, gosh. Now, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that is so not fair. I could tell you like, okay, for this type of genre, it's this. For this, it's that, you know? Um, for so- intuition, like for intuition, they want to um, get into like mediumship, psychic readings. Which one would you recommend? Okay, well, I'm never going to not recommend reading the leaves yeah, because yeah. reading the leaves is, you know, I wrote it for a reason. We wrote, we wrote that yeah. for a reason. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like that. that was the book where we basically said, if we only write one book, it has to be that. What yeah. is the book that we want to make sure this knowledge gets out to more than just people yeah. who can travel to Salem or the surrounding area, which is where we normally do our events? What if we never get to the other side of, of the United States? What if we never get to other countries? What can we deliver? What can yeah. we say in a book that can get there and help people? We go over so many things in that book about psychic ability in general, not just limited to tea leaf reading, Mm. but overall, you know, overall. And then um, the two books that followed, Lighting the Wick, all about candle divination and candle magic, also contains information. All of our books will always contain information about mediumship. Okay. Because that is a big part of our practice. And so even in the lighting the wick, we've got information about how to use candles, how to read, you know, using candles and how to, you know, use or how that is used um, 
regarding spirit communication and then awakening the crystals the third book three also, books yeah you, you you both have three books we have three books out so far well done yeah. well done yes. amazing yeah. beautiful so awakening the crystals that's going to contain information about mediumship with the crystals as well and it goes over the crystal skulls which is something that's near and dear to my heart as I am a skull keeper. And so it goes over how to connect with, you know, with um, yeah. people that have crossed over because one of the best crystals for that is a crystal skull. They're okay. talkers. Okay. They're talkers. They, they even look like us. So it's just a matter of it triggers something, you know, inside of mm -hmm. us. And it also is a perfect way, you know, for it's something spirit can inhabit easily. Because they got a memory of what it was like to 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 have a a skull, so it's like you know they they can inhabit that pretty easily. So, out of all the information you've consumed, out of all the courses you've taken, which one would you recommend? Oh boy, wow, mm. that's tough. Well, I'm gonna say you know first of all, as as an Alexandrian witch, I will say British traditional witchcraft is. It, that is some powerful training, you know, that, that it's that in and of itself. And that's more for those who feel really called um, into service in the craft. Okay. And that's what it means to be a priestess of the craft. So if that's what they're looking for and they're looking for a well-rounded craft training, I would advise finding a coven. I know that there are a lot of people out there who poo-poo covens and think coven practice isn't, you know, isn't going to be um, their path, but yeah. I recommend both, both individual practice and group practice. Okay. Those two things are two very different sensibilities, but they are both, I think, integral for a well-rounded experience. I feel like, you know, yes, you know, solo practice yeah. is kind of like you, you know, putting your music on your phone and basically putting your headphones in and listening to whatever music you want yeah. at any time. And you can change the song when you want, or you could listen to the same song 20 yeah, times yeah. Out, and nobody else is involved in that. You don't yeah. have to check in with anybody. You don't have to clear it with anybody. You don't have to take anyone else's feelings into consideration and you're all on your own and it's yeah. your solo guiding that whole musical experience. But there's nothing like going to a concert with like 10,000 of your closest friends and you're all singing that chorus at the same time yeah. and everyone's hands are doing this at the same time. The energy, the, the vibration. Energy in that room when everyone is basically in hive mind everyone is connected everyone is in the same moment everyone is experiencing this i mean it makes it's it's giving me yeah. the goosebumps right yeah, now just yeah, thinking yeah. about it that energy you you can't get that experience by yourself you can get another very powerful experience by yourself but you're not going to have the group experience by yourself mm -hmm. As somebody that actively does both, I have an active solo practice and always will. Doesn't matter how long mm -hmm. I'm in coven, if I'm out of a coven or in a coven, leading a coven or otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm always going to continue with my solo practice. And I advise everyone to do that. Um, coven practice does not preclude you from doing solo practice. Um, that's a fallacy. I don't know how that got out there, but <laughs> it's not true. So, you know, if you're a person that actually likes connecting with other yeah, yeah, yeah. people of like mind, you should seek out a coven. Will you find yeah, the yeah. perfect coven right off the bat? Maybe not, but you can, you know, you can get, you can get a lot out of it that you won't be able to get out of anything else. So. Sandra, if you had a billboard on the side of the highway, what would it say? Oh, wow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one, right? Gosh, oh. I I had one of my guests tell me you are your past. And I was like, wait, what? And he goes, yes, your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors determine your present now. So you are your past. And I was like, ooh, that's an interesting one. So mm -hmm. a couple of things popped into my head. Yeah, yeah. So one of them is um, 
one of them is the wisdom of the serpent, which was okay. you know, know thyself, right? So the idea of understanding you, you're yes. the mystery, mastery yes. of the self. Yes. That's the fool's journey in the tarot in a way, right? So there's that. But also um, in the great words of the philosopher, Brett Michaels, always happy, never content. Oh, so, so always happy, always happy, sh showing gratitude, happy. but never satisfied. Keep striving, keep going Moving for it, keep forward. working, but keep be grateful for where you are now. Keep learning, but, keep striving, yeah. be grateful where you're at, but you know, keep stretching, keep reaching for those goals, keep dreaming, Yeah, you know, keep, I love it. keep looking ahead and saying, you know, as long as I'm still drawing a breath, Life's not over. Exactly. Life's exactly. not over. As long as I'm still drawing a breath, I can be here to learn. I can change things up. Don't exactly. be afraid of change, right? Change isn't automatically bad. Yes, it moves us out of our comfort zone. We build a new comfort zone, you know? Sandro, and knowing where you are now, what advice would you give to your younger self? This too shall pass. So <laughs> don't Beautiful. get stuck. Don't, you know, don't yeah, feel yeah, stuck. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And what is your favorite herb? Ooh. Hmm. So I love lavender. Okay. I love lavender um, because of, I think I like how it soothes. Okay. I like the calm, you know, it puts you in a good, uh, a really good space. I like frankincense and myrrh. Those aren't really herbs though. You know, that's more resins and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going for herbs, cinnamon which is considered an herb i mean it's a spice yeah. um i always have cinnamon on hand it's good for a lot of different things it's really it's multi-purpose it's good for a lot of different things um and sinka foil sinka foil okay. is another one that's um it's got a lot of it's got a lot of good things to it so i think sinka foil is a yeah, that one. Be beautiful. Golden Stop. Field. Golden. <laughs> I'm gonna add one. I, I know. I feel, I, I feel like, like another well, book is coming. Honor. Okay, this. Well, if we're like, I'm more of a resins. I think I'm more of a resins girl okay. than necessarily an herb girl. I love dragon's blood resin. I love like there's so many things I use that I'm like technically that's not really an herb. It's like I have all these things in jars, and yeah. then I go, that's not really an herb. That's more of a resin. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Sandra, tell me about you. Tell me about your business. Tell me about your services. Tell me about your books. Just tell me everything. Your socials. How can we connect with you? How so, can we support you? So big things are happening here at Gallows Hill Witchery. Um, so there's a lot of growth happening. Um, and I, I almost wish that we would have done this next week because I would have been able to make a big announcement that I can't make today. The I'll talk about the business from a general standpoint, and then we'll cut into the part that I might have to have you cut out. Okay. okay. So a lot of people have probably seen people by now, a lot of people have probably seen crystal live sales. Yeah. I was the first person to ever do that. So five and a half years ago, I watched a girl selling Lula row clothing live on Facebook. And I said to myself, I could do this with my crystals and jewelry. I could do this, but with crystals and jewelry. And that's where that aspect of Gallows Hill witchery, which has just basically like grown, you know, uh, yeah. I was doing pop-ups and I was, you know, vending at different places, but I, I didn't do this live. And I thought to myself, I could do that. So basically I invented that. Um, I was the first person doing it. Um, so I, and I'm very proud of that because I'm like, look at this movement. Now there's like a million people doing this all over Instagram and et cetera. Um, so I match people up with their jewelry and their crystals that's what I do. That's part of what I do as a, as a matchmaker. So I feel like I find the right things for people and I get them connected to those things. And I absolutely adore what I do. I love what I do. Um, 
so much so that I want to be able to do this for more people than just live. Yeah. So that's where the next phase of Gallows Hill Witchery is going. So on Beltane 2023, which is May 1st, 2023, I signed a lease to have a physical office that people could come and visit with me and consult with me about their crystals and also, you know, jewelry that had these gemstones in it or yeah. are, is comprised of these, these gemstones. Um, because so many people were reaching out to me on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere, and, email, and, it, and like, like, how do I, yeah. I'm coming to Salem. How do I get with you? to be able to, you know, get some crystals, some jewelry from you. A lot of people would write to me and say, where is your location? And I'd say, I'd have to be saying to them, I don't really have one. I sell online. So I decided that it was high time that I get one. And so um, on Beltane of all times of the year, what a, what a, like, what a perfect, perfect day. (laughs) To, uh, to start something beautiful and brand new. Um, so Gallows Hill Witchery now has an, an, uh, a satellite office, I guess you'd say, aside from the headquarters here, um, we now have a, um, an actual satellite office in downtown Salem um, that is very close to the train station. It's, it's easy. Accessible. To do. Yeah, yeah. Right in downtown. It's right in the heart of the city where everybody, you know, where everybody that, that visits here is going. Um, very close to other landmarks. Um, like, you know, the Samantha statue that everyone wants yeah. to take, get their picture taken with and everything. Very, very close. Um, and so um, super excited. People will be booking appointments yeah, yeah. Um, to be able to come in and consult with me personally um, in the space and be able to take a look and actually feel, actually pick up and touch these, these Perfect. things and, uh, and actually connect with them and stuff. So that's going to be really cool. Um, I am uh, able to teach classes now at that location, exactly. you know, so I'll be able to connect with more people that way as well, because I can host classes. So some of the things that I've done at different events, different, um, can come know, to that location and if the people can Beautiful. come, it'll be, um, it'll be intimate. It won't be the Beautiful. big class yeah, yeah. You know, sizes of like 30, 40, 50 people plus as it has been in the past, it'll be small, like eight person, um, classes. So, uh, very much an opportunity for one-on-one. Nice. So, really Sandra, t- tell me about your YouTube, um, your social. So we have the Instagram and then we have the, the radio show, the show you're telling me about. Yes. The, books. So the psychic T. So on Instagram, yeah. um, it's at the psychic T and it's the same thing on YouTube. It's the psychic okay. T. So the Instagram is the psychic T. Yep. Um, no dots, no dashes, okay. no spaces, no nothing. Easy. If you see that, it's a faker. If you see dots and dashes and yeah, yeah, yeah. weird spellings and all kinds of stupidity, the yeah. two eyes in psychic yeah, yeah, or yeah. that, it's all yeah. fake people who are trying to scam you. Yeah. Um, Leanne and I will literally never message you to tell you that you need a reading from us. We will not ever do that. We will never reach out to you to be like, Hey, you know, grand rising, um, you know, hi, hi, beautiful, my dear, I have a message for you. You need a reading. No, no, never, never going to, never going to happen. Um, so if you get a message like that, it's a faker. So just go to the actual genuine account, the psychic T, um, and that's me. And you can reach me there. You can use the chat to reach me there. Um, and on Facebook, the business is yeah. Gallows Hill Witchery. So if you look up Gallows Hill Witchery, yeah. that's the Facebook and that's where the lives are. We've been talking about co-broadcasting onto the Gallows Hill Witchery YouTube. Yeah. But right now what we're trying to work out is how the comments 
we don't want one platform's comments to be prioritized. So we're trying to figure out how to oh. make it so that as comments come in from either the Facebook or the YouTube, how, um, cause when you're claiming something on the live, you know, yeah. you don't want to feel like you're on the platform that's slower. So we're, okay. we're trying to, um, we're doing some testing right now to see how that's, how that's going to work out. Cause we may be co-broadcasting onto Gallows Hill, which he does have a YouTube and we may be co-broadcasting onto the YouTube. But can you not do both at the same time? We can, but, okay. um, as we have seen in the past, it prioritizes one platform's comments over okay. the other. Okay. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're looking. We, we want, we, yeah, we want to be. To make it fair. Yeah. I now, understand. if I didn't care about making it fair, we'd already be doing that. But yeah, um, exactly. Fortunately I, for, for everybody, I have integrity. And so I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's fair that it's going to constantly prioritize one platform's comments over another. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out. So right now we're still just broadcasting to the Facebook. Um, but I have a website, gallowshillwitchery.com. No matter where we end up, that is my website. So Perfect. social media has been fickle and okay. with takeovers yeah. And people getting, you know, everything, you know, bands threatened and yeah. all this other stuff. Exactly. It's crazy. But no matter what happens, either with YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, anywhere, my website is gallowshillwitchery.com. And you can find me there. You can message me there. You can sign up as a member of the Crystal Coven and come join us. And then you will um, also be able to, if you sign up there, you can be a part of our monthly Zoom meeting. It doesn't cost anything. Um, it's for like-minded people to come on, be casual, chat. Um, and 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 I teach a little bit on it, but it, it's, it's mostly meant for our community to connect. So I love it. And the books, where can we get the books? Online or? Everywhere. Everywhere, okay. wherever yeah. you buy books, um, even in England, you can get it at uh, Waterstones. And um, how did you get it into Waterstones? Um, because we published the hardcover in England. Oh, is it in, in the with, hardcover with of Reading publisher? the Leaves? With what um, publisher? We're on Penguin Random House. Oh, send direct because Gallows Hill Witchery. I I spent a lot of and uh, and if you get obviously if you order the books through Gallows Hill Witchery then Leanne and I will sign them because Perfect. You, can Beautiful. Get them, you can get them signed through us. So. Beautiful. I love it. Sandra, I just wanted to say a great big massive thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come on, on Gentle Touch. Thank you for, for, you for oh, you. your energy is magnetic. Ooh. Honestly, it's, it's, you're such a natural educator. You're so good at explaining. You're so good at giving examples. You're so good. I can't wait to, to see the movement grow and for you to drink. I see you like in such big places like New York, London, Paris, like everywhere and just gathering people because your energy is so good. The way you explain things and just being gentle and the examples you give. So I feel like it's been an amazing episode. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I, w I would have loved to have had Leanne on with me, but she's over in England right now for three uh, weeks. Really? What part yeah. of England? She's in Somers Somerset right now. She's Somerset, in yeah. Near, near Glastonbury. They just, they spent the day in Glastonbury yesterday. Oh. Um, oh. She's at some kind of a craft. Uh, it was like a craft uh, place at the church or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was telling yeah, me, yeah. she's like, I'm going to go. There's like a little crafter's market over here at the church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're just, um, they're just hanging out and they're loving it. They're absolutely loving it over there. Perfect. I'm, I'm, I grew up in London, so I'll be going back to London, May, June. I'm currently in South America. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I can hear it in your voice. The London. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can yeah. hear it. So. It, it follows me everywhere. Sandra, thank you so much for your time, girl. I love it. Thank you, lovely. It was lovely to meet you. It was wonderful meeting you. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I, I can talk a lot. Yeah, I'm a talker. I love it. I love it. I can't wait for an ebook. Do you have an ebook? So I actually am the one. Um, I did the voiceover on all three. Of Perfect. So they're they're all available uh, as audiobooks. All okay. three books. Here's here we go for the show. Ready? All three books are available as audiobooks, and I am the voice of all three books. Um, but Leanne does. Um, she reads her part. Her her 
intro in her own voice. And then I speak for both of us for the rest of the book. So beautiful. Yes. It's very, so you have a very soothing, very calming, very reassuring voice. So even mm -hmm. if it's like, even if it's like for a bedtime read, like you, we want to wind down and we, we just want to relax and we want to focus perfect yeah. tone of voice. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I want to come out with, um, some guided meditation mm. audio because a lot of people have been asking for that for exactly. years. Yeah, yeah. They're like, you've got to come out with some beautiful yeah. guide because I've done some some work in person with people guided meditation. Okay. And every time I do it, invariably somebody says, do you have anything recorded? And I'm like, I believe it or not, I don't. And I've got to do that. It's time. It's time to put it on the to-do list. Action. It's, absolutely. It's getting moved up the to-do list several times exactly. today because I'm hearing the messages. <laughs> I love it. Talking with you. Just like we said earlier, sometimes you talk with someone and they're, they're, they're educating they'll you. They'll confirm it. They'll, they'll give it back to you in the way where you can understand it in your own terms and, and what action I need to take. Absolutely. Exactly. Leanne, thank you so much for your Sandra. time. And we'll be Sandra. Sandra, 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 Leanne, Sandra. Sa Leanne's Sandra. on your mind because I've been bringing her up a lot. I know, I know, I know. Sandra, thank you so much for your time, girl. And we will be in touch, okay? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Bye, beautiful. Bye, honey.